John here. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to write a very simple program for the TI-83, TI-84 calculator series. So, the programming on a calculator is less elegant than typing on a keyboard. You don't have access to typing in commands, you have to find them through their menu shortcuts. So before we start, I need to make the program. I'm going to call it a void. The program is now created and I can begin typing. So the first part of this program is several assignment statements. As you can see, I am storing the value 1 to the variable a and 1 to the variable b. The calculator actually has 27 built-in variables that store integers and complex numbers in them out to a very large number of figures and up to 10 places of accuracy with decimal points, integers or floats. You only have those 27. They're A through Z and additionally the theta key. There are a couple more variables that you can use but those are more advanced techniques. All of those are not going to be needed for this program. This program only needs five, we'll say six of them. So I believe this one can run with six. I don't actually need to initialize the last one and we'll cover that in a little bit. So the statements, the assignment statements are all up. A and B are player coordinates, C and D are computer player coordinates, E is the player's score. There are a couple ways to create loops. Since that is the next step, we can use repeat, we can use labels and go-tos, we can use whiles. Again, not all methods are equal. For efficiency and clarity's sake, I will use a repeat loop. Well, so repeat basically means that the code here will repeat until the conditions are met. So whatever is in this loop that I will add will run until A equals C and B equals D. With the loop started, all of the following code will be included in the loop starting with a clear home command. I'm using some keyboard shortcuts to get to there. This command clears the display. There are multiple ways to clear the display, however, clear home is the quickest and most cost effective in terms of time and memory. Next up, we're going to need two output statements. One, two, count them up. One of these output statements will output the player coordinates, the other will output the computer coordinates. So, the way an output works is the calculator has a 8 by 16 grid. Starting up in the top left corner, this is 1, 1, all the way down to 8, 16. The output goes, finds the row number, then finds the column number. So, A will be the row number, B will be the column number. And we'll set the player... I like to set the player as an O, and I usually like to set the computer as an X. So output requires two integers between 1 and 8 for the first, and 1 and 16 for the second. It also requires a string, in this case our string is only one character long. We identify that these are strings and not the value the value stored in O or X by putting the quotation marks in front. The calculator, if you'll notice, does not have semicolons at the end of lines. It does not need closing quotations or closing parentheses in most cases unless you are doing what I've done up here where you choose not to enter a new line and just add a colon to denote you are starting a new line of a new command, a new line of code. 
So, after we have our outputs, we are going to use one of my favorite ways to get input, the get key statement. And we'll store that to our last variable. In TI-84 and TI-83 basic, you do not need to initialize variables at the start. The calculator assumes that all of them are initialized and knows what their values are going to be. So get key store F will get input. The calculator will try and wait until someone pushes a button. In this case, the number that will be assigned to S is again dependent on a grid. Starting at the top left, this is 1, 1, or 11. 1, 2 will be 12. 13, 14, 15. That means this is 2, 1, 21, 22, 23. Now you get to here, and these don't quite seem to line up, but this is 24, 25, 26. The down is actually on another row, so 31, 32, 33, down is 34. There are 10 rows, meaning your last row would technically start at 101, 101. However, the on key is a special key in basic and it interrupts the flow, so you cannot actually use the on for a get key. However, the rest on its row work just fine. 102, 103, 104, and 105. Moving back to the program, we are going to try and add some logic to catch what the player is inputted. If they input 24 and B is greater than 1, we'll allow B to be stored back into B. Now assignment statements work a little bit different in Calculator Basic as well. They read from left to right. Traditionally you'll find assignment statements written as right to left in most other high-level languages. I apologize again for the uh, spot on my screen. It doesn't affect the running, it just affects the display. This calculator has been through a lot in its 10 years of use. So, we're again just adding more conditional statements. The AND part of this logic is very important. If you attempt to output to a location that is not on the 8 by 16 grid, it will throw up a display error and your program will come to a halt. So, these logic checks here are ensuring that we do not fall off the edge of the map. That looks like I made a little typo there. That's okay, we can keep moving. So, because B is our X coordinate, or our horizontal coordinate rather, we'll be checking the for 24 and 26. A will be checking 25 and 34. So, with, again, horizontal, the value will be 16. And the value for A would be 8 that we will check against. A fun fact about if statements on the calculator. Ordinarily, you would need a then statement after an if statement. On the calculator, however, you have that option, but if you only want to test one thing and execute one line after your test, you don't need the then statement. This is crucial. It actually really affects the runtime of your program. If then statements take a lot of time and the calculator does not have a lot of memory to process these. So, the next bit of code gets into some of the random number features. So we're going to choose a random integer between 1 and 4 plus 
the integer. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. plus the integer of e divided by 50. That is one very interesting statement. What does it mean? Well, I'm going to reuse the variable f here because after I've checked for player input, I don't need player input and I can save some memory by reusing that since it changes every time the loop is repeated anyways. So a random integer chooses an integer between 1 and 4 plus the integer value of e divided by 50, which means every time e, every multiple of 50 in e will increase the total upper bound of that random integer pull. I'm going to want some logic. Because again, I'm getting these values and now I need to do something with them. So I'll set one up for 1. Oh, and the computer is not using um, A and B. The computer uses C and D. And I'll check again. So what does all of this really do? I'll break it down. So we know that it can always produce a number between 1 and 4. Therefore, I can have these equal statements here that will catch all of my cases for between 1 and 4. However, the value of e will track the player's score in this game, and that is not a static value that will be incrementing every time we run through a cycle of the loop. In this case, every 50 points the player gets will increase the odds that the random integer method will pick a number larger than 4. And you'll see in just a second what happens when we hit there. Right now these are very still very simple if statements. I know they have two conditions, but the two conditions are not very complicated and the results the resulting code is pretty simple. We're taking a value at a location, adding one to it, and storing it back to the same location or in some cases subtracting one from it. Now remember earlier I was talking about those then statements well if f is greater than 4 then I need to open another statement. Now we have to do some more logic checks. This is probably the most resource intensive part of this program and sadly as far as I've been able to discover there aren't many great ways to optimize this program um, I think you could do something with the random feature but that's probably about it in terms of optimization and making this code leaner and running faster. Um, and if you're curious what those are, I'm going to post a video uh, detailing some more advanced tricks that you can use to optimize your code in BASIC. So anyways, back to this program. What does all of this mean? So if f is greater than 4, which as we've pointed out earlier, the more points a player has, the higher the chance that they will be rolling the dice and landing on this result. Then it will perform a bunch of comparisons. It compares the player's row coordinate to the computer's, and if the player has a greater coordinate, it moves the computer up towards the player. If the player is in a different column, greater than, it moves the player 
or it moves the computer towards the player. So when you do an if then statement, you do need to have an end to close the then. The calculator doesn't have any kind of indentation. So this is the only way it knows to close that if then statement. Now I'm back in the main body of my loop. Had a little typo there. Store that back into E. This increments the player's score every tick. I'm going to add another end statement. This will close the loop. We've now got output, input, and we do some stuff with that input. So this is technically enough to have the program run. I like to make my programs end on a little bit of a cleaner note, so I'll add a clear home to wipe away all of the stuff that goes on during the display. And a trick, when you're finished with a program, it will display done over up here. If you do, if you add these two lines when the program finishes executing, it will not add that. So I'm going to just test this. And as you can see, the player is an O, the X is chasing them, and when the X catches you, the program ends. Well, that wasn't a very exciting end. We can add one more piece to make it a little bit more rewarding for the player. So I'm going to skip down through. So before we do all this clear home stuff, I am going to do another clear home. <laughs> we'll do an output and we'll put one, one. And we'll say the player got a score. And I'll add an empty space. Then we will output. I can count the characters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I add another output at one, eight, and E. Note that the E does not have any quotation marks, meaning this is the value stored in E. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pause statement so that when the player loses, they can see their score and it won't immediately wipe it away. So all done. And there you have a very simple game.